What's good, y'all boys? I'm back with another reaction. Hey, this time I got 10 scientifically impossible places that actually exist. So you telling me this scientifically impossible, but it's real? Yeah, I'm gonna have to see for myself. So let's get straight into this video. Natural world may have been named too quickly. Wonders like the Grand Canyon and Victoria Falls are certainly big. I know that's real. And anyone you know what I'm who sees them will surely be impressed. I've been to the Grand Canyon but before. But sheer size isn't enough to... I'm going to stop it already, bro. The pyramids be cap. I don't care what nobody says. The pyramids cap. Truly leave a person in awe. There are other places in this world, though, that are far stranger. Places that? that seem almost alien. As if they could only exist on a planet that evolved separately Whoa. from our own. These are places that scientists that? have had to struggle just to understand how they ever could have been formed. Places that will truly make you wonder, not just because they're beautiful, so but because they seem to follow scientific laws that don't exist <sighs> anywhere else on Earth. Man, I'm stressing out. Number 10. Devil's Kettle as far as natural mysteries go, the Devil's Kettle in Minnesota is, is one of the most intriguing ones. Mountain At a particular point along the Brule River, the oh, river's nice. water splits into two. I'm gonna tell you right now, people that do this stuff right here, bro, they're they're beyond, they're crazy, bro. Like I would never, you know what I'm saying? You basically just put your life at risk just to ride a boat. I'm not going. One split continues its course onto the Lake Superior, and the other split, well, we have no clue where it goes. Scientists know it has to end up somewhere, but we don't know where that is. What do you mean? Scientists first tried putting dye into the kettle and waited to see which part of the lake turns up colors. It was a futile effort. Nothing turned up. Next, they decided to try it with ping pong balls. They also vanished without a trace. Bro, what? The what? hell is going on? We all know that laws of science dictate that the water has to turn up somewhere. Even if it is being stored underground, Whoa. there should be markings, and it should be traceable. Aliens, parallel universe, glitch in our programming, some Mayan trick? Whoa. Your guess is as good as mine. Number Man. 9. Hesdalen Lights Residents of Hesdalen Valley, Norway are continually living in a realm of great scientific mystery. Almost every night, lights appear in the sky. Oh, they no, are. I see. No, hey, no, I see. If I live there and I see that, bro, I don't care if y'all comfortable and y'all tell me that it's normal, bro. I don't want to know that's normal, bro. I'm moving away, bro, because what is that, bro? Like, straight up. Colors. They dance around, shift shapes, flash oh, no, unmistakably, and disappear, only to appear the next day during the night. This has been going on for four decades at least. And tell, Scientists you tell, are prepared. You telling me nobody knows? It says scientists are perplexed. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds like they really don't know. Perplexed by this mystery. There are theories though, but none seems to be good enough. Since at least the early 1930s, people have spotted the lights and hypothesized what could be causing them. One theory suggests that the lake is radioactive. The radon rides dust particles, and upon elevations, it decays and produces lights. Another theory suggests that the base of the valley is full of sulfuric acid. Sulfur reacts to the water what? and produces what scientists call sparks. Hundreds of tests have been performed to pinpoint the exact cause, but to no avail. That's wild. Number 8. Mobile Cave In southeastern Romania, there is a cave that was locked away from the slightest ray of light for 5.5 million years. And that has a completely different atmosphere from the Earth. The cave was dis See, I got another thing to say, bro. Years. And people like him, bro, people that explore caves, bro, they be squeezing a little tiny, you know what I'm saying? They be squeezing into the littlest, tiniest holes in, in the, ever. They be trying to make sure they can crawl through there, and then they go all the way to the back and get stuck, and they be calling for help. Why are you even risking your life, bro? What if the whole cave collapsed? Like, what are you doing, bro? There's no way. Bro, I don't care. If I'm about to get paid five million dollars, bro, I'm never crawling in there, bro. I'm too smart for that, bro. Like I know what can go wrong. I done seen reports of people dying, getting stuck in caves, bro. And I don't even like bats or dust or bugs. So you know me, I'm not going, bro. It has a completely different atmosphere from the Earth. The cave was discovered by workers looking to set up a power plant. They tested the ground to see if it was a safe place to build and cracked open a pathway that leads into one of the strangest places on Earth. 
If you descend through the narrow shaft and past a series of tunnels, you enter a chamber with a lake of sulfuric water stinking of rotten eggs. What? The air there is rotten toxic, eggs. filled with hydrogen sulfide and contaminated with 100 times the surface's level of carbon dioxide. The strangest part, though, Wait, what is, is that, that, that what is that, what is that, what is that, what is that, that, that's what I'm talking about, bro. Is that a centipede? I've inside it. Researchers have found 33 species inside the cave that don't exist. Oh, no. Bro, just imagine crawling through the cave and you see that. You know what I'm saying? You stuck. Look, you stuck in the cave like that. You came with your neck. Somebody came with your neck. That mouth. That's just right there. Boy. I don't know what I would do. See what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't do nothing because I'm never going to do that. Y'all got it. Perfect. They've adapted to survive in a sulfuric atmosphere, living oh, no, by feeding off a of foam on top of the stones. Number seven, Lake Karashe. The Soviet Union had many nuclear facilities, and most of them were ill-planned and unsafe. Inside mm. one such factory, there is a lake. All that smoke the lake's water polluted. has more radioactive material than anywhere. That's a lake, bro. That look red. It's bl it look bloody. It like people just you know what I'm saying just. Got ate by sharks in here. What's going on? On Earth, Lake Karashe is so radioactive that you will die within an hour if you stand near it. Soviets dumped nuclear waste into the lake. You would die Their nuclear within practices an hour? have caused a few problems with the lake in the past. In 1957, an explosion blew the factory apart, and the radioactive particles spread more than 23,000 kilometers. Oh, the no, area is more radioactive than Chernobyl. Back. The lake has been covered with concrete to keep these disasters from happening. Still, the entire place is eerily unstable and massively radioactive. Bro, you plan they playing around, bro. You gonna wait, bro. You go there, you know what I'm saying? This person that's taking a sample right here. You know what I'm saying? This person right here is you know what I'm saying, whatever she doing, he, she, whatever. They gonna wake up in the morning with a tail, bro. They gonna be a lizard man. A lizard man. A lizard a lizard woman. You know what I'm saying? Cause like who told you to do that? Number six, the double tree of Casorzo. In the tree countryside of, of Piemonte, Italy, there is an unusual site. There is a cherry tree there that looks in most respects just like any other healthy cherry tree, right. except that it happens to be growing directly on top of a mulberry tree. Huh? How did it? Okay. This isn't completely unprecedented. Parasitic trees have grown out of others before, but normally they are small, stunted things that live short lives before falling off. The double tree of Casorzo, though, consists of two fully formed, healthy trees. That's a real each full spreading tree its on top of another tree. Meters across. Nobody quite knows how it happened. The locals believe that a bird may have dropped a cherry seed on top of the mulberry tree. The seed grew roots that pushed through the mulberry tree's hollow trunk and reached all the way to the soil below, letting it survive and grow into a full, healthy tree. Number five. So they blaming all that on the bird. That is a valid, valid answer, ain't it? A bird done dropped the cherry seed on top of the tree and then the vines or, or the roots done grew through the hollowness of the, okay. I see. The Sleeping City of Kalachi. The city of Kalachi, Kazakhstan Kalachi. is not Disney's creation. It is as real as it gets. Citizens of Kalachi face a very peculiar epidemic. People just collapse into naps randomly, even what? while walking on the road. Oh, they no. also report memory loss, fatigue, and hallucinations. Oh, no. The epidemic affects... Bro, you run out of gas, bro. You run out of gas. Just think you just run out of gas. Nah, forget that. Before you even run out of gas, bro, you driving. You just driving. You just. And you ain't even gonna wake up. You done crashed into three trees. Your car done blew up. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you run out of gas. You get out. You know what I'm saying? You trying to get to, get to the closest gas station. You walking. Two miles in. You... What type of? Like what? Ain't nobody that whole that whole area should be blocked off. Nobody can enter. 
people from all genders and ages. Kazakhstan has even recommended evacuations, yes. but they are no closer to solving the problem. Evacuate. One theory suggests that the residents are facing some kind of radiation poisoning, since the area is near a uranium mine. You're telling me I'm just... However, there are flaws in that theory. All the blood tests look? and other uranium mines. However, there are flaws in that theory. Like what? All the blood tests and other monitoring has turned up zero evidence. Secondly, there is a town which is closer to the mine than Kalachi, and they have reported no so that, such epidemic. That's how they just fell out, you know what I'm saying? They just didn't feel, hey, give me up. No. Like what? Why did they fall out like that? Or are they trying to get a good clip? So they like, hey, go lay on the bench like that. Hey, like you fell asleep on his leg and you fall over the top. Number four, Circles of Namibia. Circles there of is Namibia. an ecological mystery sitting throughout Namibian deserts. Oh, no, see, I don't like There snakes. are fields of grass with circles carved in them at huh. regular intervals. Huh. The circles are almost perfectly created and can range from 10 to 65 feet in diameter. Yeah, and by the way, if you are thinking of the movie The Signs, you are not alone. Yeah, gang, I Forget don't know Forget explaining that is. the circles. Scientists are not even sure of the more basic questions, such as, why are there circles? Why not any random shape? Nothing grows in these circles. I think I know. Science. I think I know. I know y'all seen them birds, man. I think it has something to do with the birds because last time they said the bird done dropped the cherry on the tree, so I think the birds are, are playing a little game. I think it like all grow grass everywhere, but they just, you know what I'm saying? They just eat the little circles. have come up with various theories and all have been debunked almost immediately. In 2013, Norbert Jurgens, an environmental scientist, said that termites were the cause of the circles. But in 2015, termites. biologist Walter Schenkel hey, tested the hypothesis birds. and disproved it. Number three, the hum of Taos. The hum of A Taos. barely audible buzzing sound that you cannot pinpoint can infuriate you. Huh? We have all been there when a distant lawnmower or our TV starts making a buzz. And unless and until we don't find where it's coming from, it feels like our brain is eating itself from the inside. Yeah, I don't know. See, you gotta have, I think it's like, you gotta have a problem. Because I ain't never had that. I don't know what you talking about. Talking about a buzz. What, what buzz? What buzz are you talking about? Do I hear a buzz? No, I don't hear no buzz. Y'all tripping. Now imagine the pain and frustration of residents of Taos in hey, Mexico. Hey, hey. Since the early 1990s, large 1990s. numbers of residents of Taos have complained about a constant humming sound. It can be heard all around the town. What do you mean? It probably is. You know what type of animals? Like I'm saying, y'all live in these like little, you know what I'm saying? What is that? Like, nuts. like no For offense, but like y'all live in the middle of nowhere. trying to locate the hum, but to no success. Some scientists have hypothesized the that the town's residents are super hearers who can detect sound that ordinary humans can't. But doesn't that raise more questions than it answers? Number two, never ending lightning storm. In Western Venezuela, over the Catatumbo River, See, like, there is a storm. This is what I be talking about, bro. In Western Venezuela. This is the, like, bro, they hear stuff because where they live, like, it's like random. Like, do you see this house right here, bro? This probably look like this look like the only crib miles and miles and miles and miles and miles around. I see purple lightning, I see orange flames, I see orange rainbows, I see all this white uh light behind the clouds. And this house, this little tiny house is the only thing in the whole you know what I'm saying within a hundred miles. Like, why are y'all living in these random places? That's why y'all here. That's why all this weird stuff happening. Over the Catatumbo River, there is a storm that never ceases. Oh, nah. Starting at 7 p.m. every night, oh, lightning nah. crashes over the water for 10 hours every night, 260 nights each year. Nobody knows for sure why it happens. Up until recently, the leading theory was that it had something to do with uranium in the bedrock, what? although scientists are starting to doubt it. Today, the leading theory is a complicated one. 
It posits that the shape of the mountains cause warm trade winds to collide with cold air from the Andes. That collision is then fueled by the rapidly evaporating water below and methane from a nearby you got oil whales field. right there? Nobody actually knows for sure, though, why it happens. It's Everything whale, about it is mysterious, really? including one moment in 2010 when it inexplicably stopped. One day, the storm just died down without explanation. So this just happens 10 hours a day. Nobody just thinks it's like, yeah, it's time to go. It's time to move on. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, done, I'm done living in these random spots. I'm finna just move away. There's no way. Like, even if, you know what I'm saying? I know some people, you know, have their situation. They can't move. But if I live there and I have and I have the, you know, the resources to move, bro, I'm getting up. I'm I'm no way ever staying somewhere where it lightnings 10 hours a day for 260 days a year, bro. I'm never doing that, bro. And seemed for a while to be over. Then, after six weeks of silence, it sparked up again and has been raging ever since. Do you see this? Oh, no, yeah. Number one, the Boiling River. The Boiling Deep River. in the Amazon lies a river four miles long Boiling. and unlike any other on Earth. The Shanae Timpishka is so hot Shanae that Timpishka. any animal that steps into it gets boiled alive. When a hapless creature wanders in, the eyes cook first, melting in its what? skull. Soon the animal is in too much pain to keep swimming to safety. Water fills its mouth and lungs and it is cooked from the inside out. That's a good the meal river right gets there. as hot as night. You know I'm saying if y'all you know if y'all got stranded on this island, and you know this this Tenshkanishki water is so hot. Y'all want to? Y'all can't start a fire. Y'all know how to get them sticks. You know, rub them together and all that. Go ahead, dip them. Now that's crazy. Don't do that. But yeah, one degree Celsius, one hundred ninety-six degrees Fahrenheit, and that's scientists wild. aren't completely sure why. Normally, water that gets this hot is fed by a volcano, but whoa, this one whoa, is seven hundred hey. kilometers removed from the nearest one. There is a theory, though. Scientists believe that boiling hot water from under the earth cracks through fault lines and heats up the river, making the water a geothermal system unlike any other on earth. Th hey man, that's gonna do it. If y'all got any other reaction videos you want me to watch, any videos you want me to react to, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, do your thing, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, that's gonna do it.